Sally Fingerette. Well, I'm here at home. And when I'm not touring with the Four Bitchin' Babes or with my mental yentl thing, or playing the piano or lying awake at night thinking the world's coming to an end and what can I do? I have a, a hobby. I'm pretty proud of it. I love to sew and make things. maybe I can make some face masks for people who are experiencing the shortage, which is everybody. Why don't you join me in my sewing studio <laughs> slash dining room and uh, maybe I can show you all the different concepts for face masks and what to choose to make. Well, I might not be Rosie the Riveter, but I know I can do this and I'd like to share for those of you who would also like to help. Let me show you the three different masks that I've made from YouTube and in my search for the quintessential face mask. But with the dire need that we are experiencing, there's really no such thing as the quintessential face mask. So I made three different ones to see how they came out. Um, I would like to take a moment to also say that these masks are not CDC certified or FDA approved. However, doctors and nurses and other medical professionals and food service workers on the front lines are asking for anything in this time of crisis uh, and the equipment shortage. So two of these masks, and we're gonna put the links in this video, offered PDF patterns coupled with online instructions, which were helpful. But the one that I really liked was a wordless video with just hands moving about and some beautiful piano music. So I made all three and will include all three links, but in a bit you'll see my own tutorial for the wordless one that I'm making, uh, sort of in a mass production fashion so I can knock out a bunch at once. Um, I grabbed some old textiles from my stash. I pre-washed so they'd be pre-shrunk because if you make these masks out of the 100% cotton that needs to be used and the masks are then washed, uh, they may not stay in the same shape that they need to be in as masks. So you wanna pre-shrink your fabric. Um, but it's a hoot to think that some health professional will be wearing um, a mask made by the fabric that I made my daughter's dress for second grade uh, photos. And then here, is the fabric from her curtains from when she was a little girl. And then you can't see this is um, coffee. And uh, this is the fabric I used to line the baskets that held the muffins at our son's wedding breakfast. And then this is Green Bay Packers fabric for uh, my girlfriend, Cindy, who's a big Green Bay Packers fan. And I needed to make her a makeup bag for her birthday. Go Cindy. So. It's kind of fun to think that um, there's a health professional going to be walking around with these on their faces, but if it keeps them healthy, that's fabulous. So this is a great recycling opportunity as well. And I would encourage anyone interested in uh, face mask making to go to YouTube. If you don't like any of the styles here, see what you can find that suits your style of um, sewing and your capabilities and your level of expertise. Let's just do something, let's have fun, let's get it done, okay? So here we go, let me show you. Well, here's the first mask. It's pretty groovy. It has pleats, if you can see in the lighting, and it covers the chin, it goes above the nose, it has ties. Now, our son is a nurse, and he said this is a great one because in the hospitals, they can't have latex, so this is a great one. Um, pretty, pretty comfortable, you know, you can pull it down. I'm, pull it back up. So um, this came with a PDF pie, uh, pattern like this. We're going to put the link in and let's show you the next one. Well, this one's huge. It's way too big. Um, it's a great one. And I'll tell you, the guy who taught it on the internet is really cute. So go, go have a look. But anyway, this one is huge and it comes in... This PDF file, it has a small, medium, and large. This is a large, I would probably take a small. The only thing I would wear that's small. Oh, God. But anyway, and it's this is a quick make. This goes up quickly. Um, not a lot of pleats, not a lot of issues. Just 
you know, boom, you're in. So there's this. Okay, next. Well, this is the one that I like the best for me. I like to make it. I enjoyed it. It's really comfortable. And I think that uh, my family, my friends, and maybe some professionals would wear it uh, without any issues. This is elastic. Maybe if there's a latex issue, they won't. But it's very comfortable. It's easy on and off. The pleats are not difficult. I have a nice uh, tutorial. This is the third wordless one where the pretty hands on the pretty piano music was going. So I did a step-by-step -step tutorial for you if you follow along and sew along or watch. Um, but let me tell you why this one is uniquely different from the others that I think for me, I'm going into mass production with these. And that is, besides these pleats, covering a lot of territory. Also at the top, there's a twisty tie installed that you can pinch so that, oh, makeup, so that you can put your glasses on without fogging them over. Also, this comes equipped with, and I'll show you, there's a pocket in here. There's a flap pocket where if you have the HEPA uh, filter for the antibacterial and virus germ catcher, stuff. I, as a musician, I don't know the big words, but um, you can put filters in here and that this is machine washable, but the filters are disposable. So this has pretty much a lot of what we're looking for. So I'm going to be doing this one. So why don't you come and join me? Let's get going. For your supplies, here's what you'll need. Some 100% cotton, pins or clips, one quarter inch wide elastic, you can get at Amazon. Twisty ties, you can find in your Glad garbage bag box. And hopefully you have an iron, an ironing board, sewing machine, ruler, scissors and thread. I use cotton thread, polyester is fine. So let's start with one rectangle of cotton, measuring 15 inches by seven and a half inches. Then two small rectangles measuring two and a half inches by four inches. You'll need two pieces of elastic cut at about 10 inches each piece, one for each ear. So there you have it. Let's start. Here we have on my countertop, I've cut out, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen masks cut and ready to start piecing together. Don't mess with me, I'm somebody's mother. I've taken on much tougher than you I have given birth to sons and daughters I part the waters I walk through Now that all our pieces are edged on both sides, we're going to take the pretty side out, fold it in half, give it a press. Pretty side up, fold it in half, Nice and even. Give it a pass. Yeah, it's a hot iron. Okay, let's begin the uh, construction of these masks. We have the folded section, and again, this was. 15 inches by seven and a half inches. When you fold it in half, it's basically a seven and a half inch square. Here is the fold. Here's the top that we've edged, uh, zigzag to protect it. And what we're gonna do is we wanna make the slot for the nose guard pinch thing. And what we want is from one and a half inches over from this side, we're gonna stick a pin. There's one and a half right here. And then again, the other side, I'm gonna put my ruler right there. One and a half, stick a pin. And now we're going to edge this seam and this seam, leaving this open so that we can install our nose guard thingy. I guess that's what we're gonna call it, the nose guard thingy. Okay, so right here and right here, and you could go a quarter of an inch seam, that's two eighths, or we would go three eighths, which is a standard, leave your machine in its proper, uh, position and just give it a go. 
This is the presser foot, gonna put it down. I've got my needle set in the center position. It's about three eighths of an inch on a seam. Here I go. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a little back stitch just to lock it down, nice and secure. Get to the pin right before the pin. Back stitch again, lock it down. Cut my thread. I'm gonna move over to the next spot. Do not hit your pins, take them out. You know, if you're too close, three stitches. Forward, back, locks it down. Here we go to the end. Again, I'm gonna. That's it. Now we gotta press our seam and the next step. Here we go. Now the wrong side, ugly side of the fabric is now on the outside, the good side, pretty side. And that's it. We're gonna top stitch right here. We've pressed this inside flap down with our slot, but we're gonna to top stitch this to hold this down uh, and secure it so that when um, they're washed, this fold will stay even, because now it's iron, but once it's washed, it goes away, sort of. So um, top stitching like this, it's not that difficult. You just want to do about one eighth of an inch around the parameter of the inside. This is kind of how you have to do it. Here we go. some threads and look how nice that looks. Very professional. It'll be very helpful for later. And so let's go press this and move on to the next step. Okay, we're back. Top stitch looks great. Have the opening. We are now, this is the outside, pretty side. Turned. We're gonna take about a half inch up from this line. We're gonna pinch it. And we're going to put that slice about a half inch from the top. We're going to iron that down. And now we are going to top stitch the entire width and length, width again and length, all the way around, making your seam allowance about an eighth of an inch, very close to the edge, all four sides. Let's go over to the iron and work with our nose clip thingy. Okay, we're ready to put the nose clip thingy, which is, we call a twisty tie, I guess. I have these in my baggie drawer. Don't know why, they were just there. Okay, so what you wanna do is sort of eyeball, you know, the center, halfway point, to draw an imaginary line in your head where this would go so that it could clip over someone's nose. We're gonna insert it in this top flap and we're gonna hide it away. We're gonna scudge it in there. That's a mus musical term, scudge. Like when someone you want it louder, you say, just a scudge, please. Okay, tuck it in, and then we're gonna go to the machine, and we're gonna close off this top flap right along this line. And lock that in and put some clips. I love these things, unless you step on one barefoot. Nah, ugly, not at all, not at all pretty. And go to the machine and we're gonna tighten that up. Gonna line this up to fall right on top of my previous stitch. And I'm going to go forward and backward to secure. Lose these babies and take off running. Just don't step on one. They hurt. Okay. And there you have it. So now we have secured that flap. We've got the nose pinch thingy. Watch this. Is that thing a beauty? That's what the doctors like and the nurses like. That's why this flap seems to make a lot of sense, besides the fact that it's also for the filter if you want, but it's about holding that nose pinch thingy in. Now we're gonna work on the pleats. What you wanna do is take the side with the slot, turn it over, and we're gonna work our way that away towards what will be the bottom of the mask towards your mouth and chin. We're gonna pinch about a half inch here. We're gonna pinch it up and place it down. And we're gonna take clips or pins. I can show you with a pin. 
how it's done like this. You can go either direction. And then you take another pinch and give it a hike. And we're gonna do a little bit of measuring just to see that, so that uh, they're sort of not equal to each other, but possibly equal to the end of the mask. Let's see, this is one, two and a quarter, two and an eighth inches. This would be two and an eighth. <laughs> two and an eighth. I'm good. All right, and do a little clip guy here. Now, when we do, these pleats are really kind of ad hoc, whatever you want to do, but you want the finished product when we get down to the wire of the width from here to here, you want it about three and a half inches, anywhere from three and a quarter to three and a half, no more, because we are at three and a quarter. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew across here and across here just to secure so I don't break a needle while I'm sewing. If you do, make sure to take your pins out as you run it under the presser foot. One last tip, let's iron these pleats down. I'm gonna give them a hit of, hit of steam because then they'll behave better at the machine. It's nice to sit down and sew with everybody behaving and just being simple and cooperative. There we go, nice. Here we are back at the machine, ready to sew the pleats. I know that was complicated. Uh, I think once you do a few of them, it's just gonna be really simple. So remove one and I know the threads are everywhere, but watching you see how this gets finished up, very clean looking. I'm gonna sew all the pleats together. Starting there, I've got about 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna backstitch to lock it down and I'm going to go forward. Holding tight to my pleats. They want to sometimes run away. There we go. It doesn't have to be so tight because we're going to put some binding on them. But see, the stitching holds it in place for now. Here we go. We're going upstream. As you see, the pleats are facing that way. On the outside of the mask, you want the pleats facing down on the outside of the mask. That's key for some reason. I, I couldn't tell you, but I know that it's a consistent thing and I'm going for it and you should try to. Here we go. My threads are really, okay. Here's our nose guard up on top. You can see the pleats go down. And then when you open it up, you get that. That's pretty groovy, isn't it? Okay, now let's put it back together and Go back and press and prepare these edges. So here we are with the mask. We've got the um, outside of the mask up like that. And what we wanna do is flip it over so that the inside pocket here, you can see that this is the nose, uh, where the filter goes at the nose top. Now, we have to make these two tabs for the binding, which will be the tunnels where the elastic runs through. This is the uh, wrong side of my fabric. This is the pretty side of my fabric because it's a little brighter. I'm gonna take pretty side down to pretty side up. Now, the width here of the mask is three-ish inches, and this is a four-inch tab. So I'm gonna make the raw edges together like that, but we're gonna find that there's a bit of an overhang on each side, there it is, sorry. An overhang on that side and an overhang on this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and clip it so that uh, we have some hands free. And I know this looks really confusing and you're thinking, uh, what, what, what is this? Okay, make it go around again. I need to flatten that out, go around, clip it again. Do it to the other side as well. And there we go, now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine. We're gonna do our regular 3 eighths of an inch along this seam here, and again, this seam here, making sure that you catch all layers, even that little underhang thing. Here we go. Okay, sewing the bindings on. Here we are, uh, give or take a few clips. Let's see if I get this out of the way. I'm going to give it again about, let's see, 
3 8 of an inch margin from the edge. If you can see from here, just leave it at 3 8 I am going to really secure this down. I'm going to back stitch and then send it through. And there's a lot of layers here, so you gotta watch out and just give it a get stuck with a push. I'm gonna back stitch to secure it. Flip to the other side. Take this off and I'll show you from here. I love throwing these things around. How this goes. It actually picks up like this. And we're going to fix it. Okay, now I would love to just clean up a few threads. It looks really messy, but we're gonna hide all this. So if you're thinking, oh my goodness, what's with all? It's actually no big deal. All right, I'm heat up my oven. My uh, heat up my oven. I am in the kitchen. Heat up my iron, and I'm just gonna press these these guys, these little tabby layovers, right, right there, a little closer for you maybe. These guys. I'm just gonna press them down. Help them stay down. Don't burn yourself, if you can't help it. And then this. Now, here's the key, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this end down here. We're just gonna roll it about a quarter of an inch. Give it a finger press, as we say, you know, run it with your nail. And then if you can see this, the stitch line right here, we're gonna bring this over just to the stitch line. And some threads everywhere, and we're gonna press that down. Woo, that's nice and hot. And put a clip in it, and put another clip in it. Then we're going to do it again to this side. We've done these little hangovers. We're going to fold about a quarter of an inch. Finger press, and then Roll it over to hide all the seams that we've taken. And just gonna give it a schwitz. Whoops, I have to tuck that in. Ouch. Okay. And flip it down. We are almost there. We're gonna stitch really close to the edge here it may show through on the other side, but we don't care because someone's going to be very happy to have a mask, and that's that. Last bit. We are going to close off the seam. We're going to take it about, you know, real close to the edge here. Just get it down. We'll go through to the other side. Here we go. I'll push it through with all the layers. I'm going to back it up as well. We want this really strong. I'm going to Get it through. Never easy. And terrific. You want to double back so these seams stay really strong. Again to the other side. Sometimes what I do when I have a lot of bulk, I'll just start in the middle kind of and then go forward a few stitches. I go back a few stitches just to get the ball rolling. There we go, much better. A little trick. Here we go, okay. And back it up a bit. Oh, I believe that was it. Now we're just going to clean it up and put in the elastic and be done. Yay! We're all set to do the elastic insertion into our face mask. Here's a 10 inch piece of quarter inch elastic with a tiny little safety pin in the end. And what I'm going to do is take this binding, the ending of the mask, and I'm gonna insert the safety pin and push it through, sort of scoot the fabric down, wiggle out the safety pin, and here we go. We're gonna pull it through to the other side and pull the elastic through. Now, 
This next part's tricky. We need to tie the elastic together. So you pull this down, give it a stretch, and we're going to loop it, pull it, loop it and pull it through both pieces. But what you want is you want this knot to fall as far back as you can get it before it tightens or you snap and hurt yourself. Be careful. And then you can straighten it out and insert this knot, which will hold up, supposedly. It should, I think. Pull it through. And here you are. And so now, this is, with the pinch, a mask. So I hope everyone enjoyed this tutorial, had some fun. Shout out to Christine Lavin for the editing. Thank you so much for doing this with us. And please, everyone, take care of yourselves. Take your vitamins, eat right, get lots of rest, take care of each other, and sending you good wishes for great health. Love you, bye. And do it. A woman's gotta do her thing, I say. A woman's gotta do what a woman's gotta do. A woman's gotta do what a woman she must do. Step back, baby. Get on your Nikes, baby. Don't need a doctor's note. Nobody gets a vote when a woman's gotta do.